How's it going everyone? So iOS 26 beta 6 is officially released for developers and sooner or later it will be available for the public beta in the beta 3. And in this video we're going to go ahead and cover the new changes because there's actually quite a few improvements that's found on Apple CarPlay. So of course timestamps and everything will be in the video description down below for your pleasure. Now let's go ahead and talk about other devices that also received this new beta 6 firmware update for the developer beta. iPad OS, TV OS, HomePod, Vision OS, Watch OS, and Mac OS all received the latest firmware updates. And I have all the codes and stuff like that alongside my screen. And then the official release for iOS 26 is literally less than two months away. Sometime during the end of September is typically when Apple will release the next generation of iPhones, the iPhone 17 lineup. And along that unveil of that device is when we should be expecting to see the release date for the full version of iOS 26. So let's get started with the first new noticeable changes. And the first one can be located actually if you go into your system settings. You see now if you actually go into any one of these toggles, this one's a bad example. Let's go into the display section. So where it says show album artwork as an example, whenever you enable any icon now, it now features this glass animation. So a thing you'll notice on CarPlay side of things is there's now new animations for like anything you like interact with and open up now. Some of these are like minor interactions or a little animation effect, but the most significant one that's noticeable is possibly the toggle on or off toggle. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, massive improvement can also be found in maps. You see, whenever you set navigation, you know, as I previously stated, I didn't have the ability to pinch and zoom. On some older vehicles, this is now compatible. And this vehicle that we're using as an example for reference is a 2017 F-150. Now, an issue I used to face in this one, whenever I would set like directions as an example to some location, as soon as I hit go, before I wasn't able to pinch and zoom, I had to still rely on the plus and minus, but now I'm actually able to pinch and zoom finally, regardless on what I'm doing. So now I could finally be driving and actually do this instead of struggling with the plus and minus. So massive improvement, massive fix. I'm greatly grateful to find out that beta six did actually improve that. I originally thought was, uh, my biggest concern originally was I was only going to be able to do this and that was it. But now you can actually set directions and still utilize the pinch and zoom. That's a massive fix right there. Now, another thing I was very excited for, this is what I test in every single beta, is to see if we finally have YouTube streaming abilities. Uh, unfortunately, short answer, no. It's still not here. Whenever I try launching like a YouTube video, video as an example, the way it was supposed to work, you have to have your vehicle in park and then as soon as you have your vehicle in part, you'll supposed to click on a video. And then right on the top where it shows you the airplay icon. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Right here, this little window will pop up. You'll put to select CarPlay, right? And then you'll be able to stream right here. But unfortunately, uh, again, that's not, that's not here on the beta 6 update. Hopefully beta 7 or possibly by the time the, the RC version is released, that's when we should start seeing this uh, feature being enabled. I'm not sure what's up with the holdup, but yeah, uh, to this very day, we still don't have that ability, unfortunately. But something that has been resolved is the live activities. You see, now I can actually use live activity on older vehicles. Previously, this was only a feature on newer cars, like my 2024 BMW X5 I used to had. It used to have the ability to show me that live activities, but on older vehicles, like my double din size screen right here on this older model, it used to not work, but now it actually does work. So live activity now works. And yes, you, even with live activities, like this flight that I'm tracking, I could long haul to clear. Or if I have other activities, I was able to slide and toggle between other activities. In terms of widgets, uh, beta one, even on this older vehicle, I was able to have two widgets running at the same time. Unfortunately, I still don't have that ability, but on my screen, I'm only able to run one. I know other models, you could run two or more. So if you have like a larger screen, like a new Kia or new BMWs do, that little large display style, you can run two or more widgets, but on double din bin size screens like this, I'm stuck with one. Let me know in the comments if you have a double din size screen like I do. Let me know how many widgets you can fit. But in beta one, I was able to run two. 
even with the smart zoom enabled so far it's not working here even with smart zoom enabled as you witnessed me show you right there then when receiving an incoming call the animation style has also been slightly tweaked as you notice it popped out a lot smoother than previously and now whenever you pick up a call it now fades now away fades i noticed away. it now has a fade effect animation and over here on the side you have the ability to end the call right here as i previously showed you in my older video or you can tap right here to have access to your number keypad or add more callers Just unfortunately, if you have uh, a live activity enabled, it will unfortunately just cause it to go away as you just witness. And then it'll reappear once you end the call. Then when you receive a text message, I have noticed whenever you tap on the message and Siri will tell you what the message body read. Marks it test. The tap back capability is much quicker than previously because I remember before it used to struggle and take a while. So a good improvement right there where you can make quick replies was to back tap much quicker and efficient. Now it's no longer buggy, it's actually quicker. At least for me, it was buggy, but now I noticed that's been resolved. But in terms of the music app, uh, based off everything that I've seen, uh, nothing here has been really improved. It still features that smooth and bubbly animations you witness right over there with the liquid glass. The liquid glass over here is still the same. It's not as pronounced how it is on the iPhone. Too sure if it'll ever be as pronounced as it is on here. Like it's a lot of detail. I really don't have that ability over here you can see. But I wouldn't be surprised if Apple down the line actually does improve this. But in terms of like anything newly added here, uh, I didn't see anything. Same goes for like the podcast. Podcast looks exactly the same like it previously looked like. But you do have this little uh, quicker ability to quickly skip tracks or slow down the track. And then of course, if you like to step it up a notch, you can use the rabbit and go even quicker, I noticed. But nothing crazy or nothing new added there, unfortunately. Because I also checked the wallpaper settings and see if the Apple gave us like the old ones that they removed. Unfortunately, they did not. They just continued to give us the new one, which was this one, but just in other color options to choose from. That's about it. And anyways, there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, if you could take two seconds, hit that like button and like. Truly appreciate those because those allow me to continue knowing that you guys enjoy watching these like latest update videos whenever Apple releases a new beta update. Keep in mind, these new changes will also come effect and be available even in the public beta as well. As typically the developer beta comes out first and then, then that software update is also applied on the public beta. So it's the same thing which could come out the next couple of hours. We may see it. But last week it was available on Thursday. So maybe this Thursday the public beta will also feature these new changes for CarPlay. But there you guys have it. If you would like to watch more, maybe you want to check out what's new on the Apple TV side of things because they actually added a lot of features. I covered that video in depth over there. Thank you so much for watching.